How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and I am currently here at Frontier 3D in Perth at an awesome 3D printers meetup. So today is mostly just to chill out and have some fun and catch up with some friends but I thought what I'd do is take you around and check out some of the awesome 3D printers here. We've got I think 23 working 3D printers currently here in the studio printing away so let's go take a look at it. So to kick things off, we have the Cetus from Cetus 3D. This is the machine I brought along to the meetup. I actually brought it with me all the way from Sydney in my checked in luggage. And this little thing is a beast. I love bringing it to events because it's so small and portable, yet it just seems to print every time out of the box. I just take it out and let it go. So I was putting a torch test here and it did not skip a beat the entire meetup. Then we have the Cubicon Single. This was the single largest machine at the event that was running. And this is owned by Will, who runs that 3D print guy on YouTube. He has, a, has his own channel. And uh, as you would have seen in my previous review of the Cubicon Single, this thing just works, basically. You get what you pay for. It's not a cheap machine, but it's definitely a very, very good machine. As you would have seen here, I, <laughs> we were sticking Simplify 3D stickers on everything. They gave me a batch to hand out. So every machine got a Simplify 3D sticker. Also here we have Will's Flash Forge, which is a very early clone of the MakerBot 2X. And this is a great example of how you can get an old machine and just keep it running by just hacking and modifying it. He'd made so many changes to this machine to keep it going. And it looked like a bit of a tip, to be honest, but it just printed. It worked really, really well. He's printing these little keychain tags here of the YouTube channel name. And yeah, it was really impressive to see it going like that. So I thought I'd give him one of my stickers. You get a sticker. This one's a bit of a blast from the past. This is a up plus two, and here we had it attached to a massive aluminium frame, printing upside down. So I did this a while ago in a test to see if you could print upside down, and as you can see here, it works no problems. And here we have an up mini. I started with an up mini. I love these little machines, and these are prints that it had created, but it wasn't running at the time, sadly. But yeah, they're still. It's really cool to see that they can still hold their own against all of these newer machines on the market today. Something awesome to see was someone bought a Balco from Kogan. This is a Wanhao i3 version 2.1 in a box, completely unassembled, and it was going within an hour of bringing it there, printing beautifully because of everyone's help. And you can see here the first print off the machine it was just flawless, which is really, really cool and very unusual to get a machine going so quickly, but everyone just has so much knowledge in that room. And you can see with the, the LCD, it had only been running for less than two hours total, and it was printing beautifully. This is a machine I have heard of, but hadn't seen in person. It's the Mingda Glitar 5C. It looks really well built. From what, from what I've heard, it's still not that great of a machine. It needs a lot of tweaks. This one's owned uh, by Frontier 3D, and they've done a lot of modifications to keep it going. It's a massive machine, and they have got it printing fairly reliably now, but not as accurately as I think they would like. It still needs a fair way to go. But it wasn't just FDN printers on display. Here we have the Pegasus Touch from Full Spectrum Laser, which is an SLA 3D printer. And as you can see, the platform lowers into the bath of resin, the laser cures a layer, then the platform must fully remove itself from the bath to cure that layer properly, which means it's a very slow printing process to get prints off this machine. It is, however, very high detail, as you'd expect of an SLA system. And this is probably my favorite machine at the event. This is Bryce's Cintron i3 kit. Bryce actually has his own YouTube channel as well. And the thing about this kit is it arrived broken and he has just hacked and hacked this machine to make it functional. It's actually not even symmetrical. It has a threaded rod on one side supporting one side with the acrylic frame on the other. And it's got some MDF underneath the build platform. All sorts of modifications he's done to make it work. It still has a little way to go, but it is pretty impressive how far he's gotten it. It was nice to see a Wanhao i3 version 1 holding its own against all the newer machines. I actually bought my Wanhao i3 version 1 at the same time as this machine, so nice to see it's still printing. There was also a PrinterBot Plus on display, but actually I found it quite funny. This is one of the few machines there that was just completely non-functional due to various reasons, which is a bit sad considering the things I've heard from PrinterBot, but apparently this machine just had loads of problems and they're still trying to get it going. It's nice to finally see a Zortrax M200 in person. They're very nice looking machines. And this one was actually printing the Elder One from Harry Potter because thanks to Joel Telling, that's all you're meant to print apparently on a Zortrax M200. This was the only Delta going at the event. This is an FL Sun 
Cossel, built by Rowan, who's starting up a YouTube channel called Making Down Under. And I was actually really impressed with the print quality he was getting off this machine. He's done a few mods, but not too many. It's printing on a print in Z plate, which you can just flex to get the prints off. And yeah, he was getting some really good results. Actually, he tried printing flex on it later in the event, and it actually worked as well, which is really cool, considering it's got a Bowden extruder. It was also really nice to see these laser cut plywood kits, the Printerbot Simple and the original Printerbot Plus, both of which ironically were printing really well when the newer metal Printerbot Plus was laying in ruins basically. There was a CEL Robox printing away, I still think these machines are very pretty, but sadly the print quality it was producing of the torch test was very disappointing considering that there was very cheap Chinese kits producing much better results at the same time in that room. Frontier 3D's wall of Flashforge Dreamers was really impressive. These four machines are pretty much their daily drivers and they use them to print all sorts of things from custom props to functional prototypes. They just keep going and going pretty much 24 seven from what I'm told. And finally, we had an Ultimaker 2 printing on its side because why not? So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video of me being here at Frontier 3D in Perth. I've had an absolute blast catching up with people, checking out all the awesome machines, the DIY ones, the ready to run printers, all machines, especially like the ones that are sort of hacked together from eBay kits and made to work. I love seeing that sort of thing. And yeah, I'm gonna go have some fun and sort of enjoy my Christmas here in Perth. So I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys, bye.